Hello, I'm Robin Jackie, a senior technical consultant at MathWorks. I specialize in helping customers with model-based design solutions, including electrical modeling and complex parameter estimation strategies. In this video, I'll show you how MathWorks Consulting Services can help you to automate the parameter estimation of a battery equivalent circuit model. A typical equivalent circuit model for a lithium battery has one or more parallel RC branches to accommodate for the time constants of the battery. Each of the elements in the equivalent circuit has dependence on the different operating conditions of the battery, such as state of charge and temperature. Calculating the proper values for all of these lookup tables is a complicated task that requires a significant amount of experimental data. The experimental data that you see on the right has a series of measured discharge pulses at constant current followed by long periods of rest. If I zoom in on one of these, you can see the nature of the pulse and you can see that there's some time constants associated with the response on either side of the pulse. Particularly the relaxation phase after the current is removed is very important to computing the optimal parameters for the equivalent circuit model. So now let me show you how we can automate the process of this estimation. We start by creating this object, which is defined as a MATLAB object and contains all of the data that's required for performing the estimation. So everything that was important from this data set has been loaded into this, this data object that we created. So we're going to set some specific settings for this object, and then we're going to load in the measured data set. Once we've loaded that data, if I type this again, you can see that the data has been loaded in. And I can also plot that data through here. It's important to break this data up into individual pulse objects, because it's not really feasible to estimate the entire pulse sequence altogether. We have to kind of break it up into steps. So these methods will process the data in that way. This resulting plot that you see shows you the locations that we identified in the data. These indicate the actual places where the pulses began and ended. I'm just going to zoom in on one of these. So this, this range that's um, surrounded by the red markers here is actually the, um, the load portion of the curve. And the portion that's surrounded by green markers if I scroll to the right, the portion by the green markers is surrounding the relaxation phase. So if I zoom back in on one of these, we can obtain quite a bit of data just by inspecting this. And so this next block of code actually looks at this data and calculates a good approximation of the open circuit voltage um, based on the final voltage at the end of one of these relaxation phases. So it does this through the entire data set to calculate a first approximation at open circuit voltage. And it also looks at the voltage drop from this um, initial point where the load was applied. And it uses that to calculate a good approximation of the series ohmic resistance that you would see instantly ap across the terminals of the battery cell. So let me run this block. And you'll see after this completes that we've populated some lookup tables for two parameters in the model, EM, which is the open circuit voltage versus state of charge, and R0, which is the ohmic resistance that I mentioned. These values aren't perfect, and we're going to tune them again later. The next plot that just popped up here you can see is the uh, simulation um, versus the measured data. Um, so at this point, we've actually calculated some of the parameters, and, and we have a better picture of what the simulation will do compared to the measured data. So you can see that it's, it's essentially figured out the correct open circuit voltage in that it relaxes um, to eventually the same value. Um, but you can see that during the dynamic portion of the curve, it's, it's not correct yet. If we zoom in on this, you can also see that we, we have a pretty good approximation of the ohmic resistance as well, because this voltage drop is, is pretty similar here. The next thing that we're going to do is try to calculate initial values for the time constants of the battery. So this block of code does just that. This is done by looking at the exponential curve at the relaxation phase of each and performs a curve fitting operation, assuming that there are three time constants. And from the results, you can see that we've identified 
approximate time constants versus state of charge for each. And the simulation results have updated again. In this case, you may be able to see a little bit of improvement in the shape of the time constant here. But still, it's not quite right because we don't have the resistances that are paired with each of the time constants. So the next thing that we do is try to estimate those resistances. So this block of code treats the circuit uh, like a linear system. It makes some assumptions and, and uh, does some, uh, some conditioning and processing of the data to kind of form a nice problem that can be solved using a linear systems optimization. So if I run this block, You'll briefly see a, a modified version of the data where the relaxation has been essentially downsampled so that we can kind of scale the data to look at relaxation and the portion during the load relatively equally. It's done a best linear fit on that, calculated some approximate values for the resistances that match the time constants. And as you can see in this, this final plot, we have a much closer picture of what the entire pulse sequence should look like with regards to the measured versus simulated values. So, so these parameters are pretty good, but there's still room for improvement. This last step uses Simulink design optimization along with the Simscape model of the battery equivalent circuit with the best parameters that we have so far. Simulate design optimization further optimizes the parameters overall such that we have the best possible fit between the values of the, the measured simulation and the simulated data. This step loops on each of the pulses in the pulse sequence and fits the parameters for each of those columns in the lookup tables. So, so the lookup tables have columns of state of charge and the very beginning and very end of each pulse corresponds to a particular column of data in those lookup tables. So we actually loop on each of these um, each of these pulses in sequence to try to find the best parameters through this technique. One thing here that we do that's important is that we actually overlap each of these pulses as we go through this sequence. So we extend the data so that we, we essentially layer the data for each of these optimizations that we do. And that's because we want to make sure that when we do an optimization for given parameters in the table, we want to make sure that we include all of the data that exercises those parameters. Uh, we find that to be pretty important. However, there's no clean place to break the battery data uh, cleanly and, and have a certain set of data only influence one particular set of parameters and another chunk of data only influence a separate set of parameters. So we have to kind of overlap these. As this runs, we can actually watch the plots of the data. So this is showing the measured data versus simulated as we do each step using Simulink design optimization. On the left side here, you see a range that's focused into the actual current portion of the pulse itself. And on the right, it's zoomed out to the entire pulse range, including the beginning of the next pulse. And this is the overlap that I mentioned. So this shows before one of the steps from Simulink design optimization. And then you briefly see a plot of the parameter trajectories. And then we see the results after the optimization has completed. And then we're proceeding to the next step. After this process has completed, we can see the final results. This plot shows the measured and simulated results. If we zoom in, You can see the values are very close together. Residuals are generally within a few millivolts. This plot shows the resulting lookup tables for the circuit parameters. These may only be valid for the given operating condition, such as temperature and current. So additional data sets may be required at other operating conditions. The code for this example was developed by MathWorks Consulting and can be customized for you. Parameter estimation can be a complex process, but we've done this before and can help you customize a solution for your specific application. We focus on helping you quickly apply our tools to your project while teaching you how to use the software effectively. You can learn more about battery modeling related services by visiting our website at www.mathworks.com slash battery.